What's going on, Evan Nation? John Pemba here with Howard Bender. Welcome into the Fantasy Alarm MLB DFS Playbook Game Show Preview here for the six-game main slate on Wednesday. We are looking at the afternoon slate starting at 1.05 p.m. Eastern here, Howard. Uh, and this is a six-game slate that could very easily be a three-game slate if you're looking at the weather concerns here in the Northeast as folks are getting storm. Uh, starting with Baltimore and Philadelphia, and then we go over to Chicago. They're expected to get snow in the month of April. Uh, so we could have a whiteout there in Chicago. So, uh, yeah, could get a little messy here, Howard, with six games on the slate. Could get a little messy. And, it, you know, obviously the the concern for me is just is the, the pitchers that it takes off the board. Um, to not be able to follow up, I mean, you, Corbin Burns' 11 strikeout first start with a matchup here against Kansas City, it's kind of a bummer. You know, Cole Reagan's also going to be opposite him. Uh, in that game, I'm not saying that I was locking down Cole Reagans against this Baltimore lineup, but you know, having that pulled out there is uh, you know a bit of a bummer. We also have to watch what's going on in Philadelphia, uh, so that could take off Zach Wheeler um, off of the uh, off yeah. of the menu as well. Yeah, for sure. Here again, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a quick show with it being six games and a couple of uh, weather concerns here. So let's uh, let's just waste no time. Let's jump into it. The pitching position. Uh, again, Spencer Strider uh, is the top price pitcher on this slate. Is he going here for Atlanta? The, the DraftKings is a little messed up. They're showing us a lot of pitches for Chicago. I'm assuming Strider is expected to start here for uh, Atlanta. The way their it, rotation it went is, around. it is Strider. They just the the White Sox have not announced who's starting opposite. So, right. so they got everybody showing on there. So they've got everybody showing every every pitcher showing. Uh, so yeah, Strider, but we don't know if that game's going to play. If it does play, it's going to be cold. It's going to be wet. And they're expecting snow and then a change over to rain at some point in that game. You mentioned Corbin Burns. Uh, they're basically at 100% thunderstorms from all day uh, in Baltimore here. So that game likely doesn't get going. They get Evaldi against Tampa Bay at 9K. Wheeler again in a rain game, so probably not. Reagan's in the rain game, so probably not. Brings you down to Savale. I mean, just looking at the starting pitches that we might have to pick from here, Howard. Ivaldi, Savali, Paddock, Montes, and Puck. <laughs> Joe Ross is back in baseball. I mean, like that's that's not this isn't it's not great. It's not I great. think uh, I, I you know what I, I think I would actually look at uh, Patrick Sandoval uh, going uh, sure. against Miami. I think that's if I'm paying down. Listen, I like uh, I like Frankie Montas. I just I worry a little bit about obviously him maintaining and going up against the lineup as as tough as Phillies. But I look at, at Sandoval and I'm like, man, this Miami lineup, uh, it just looks terrible right now. Nobody's hitting. Uh, you know, you've got some good names in there like Jazz Chisholm and and Jake Berger, but even L Luis Arias, a, a batting title champion in two leagues, yeah. uh, isn't even batting 200 right now. So. You know, I, I think that Sandoval, actually, if you're going to just, you know, lock in Strider as uh, as the top play, if, as long as that game goes, um, yeah, I think Sandoval is my pair up. Yeah, I, I, honestly, not a terrible spot, uh, knowing that Miami has, uh, you know, the lineup that they do. A couple of guys that can't lefties, but um, definitely some swing and miss. Again, uh, there's... I mean, you know, Zach Eflin's pitching really well against Texas tonight, but is Savali yeah. going to be able to repeat that type of performance? I like Nathan Evaldi's 9K. Tampa Bay's lineup certainly leaves a lot to be desired, but, you know, I was like Parides Humbert uh, tonight. You know, they definitely have some power in that lineup. You know, this, this may be a spot where we, you know, I know we're doing the pre-show, but we might not know until we know, right? Play the chalk. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, we we might not know until we know where where these games stand in the morning when it comes to roster ship, right? Yeah, no, we definitely won't know. I don't even know. Are we going to have roster ship uh, uh, up there on? Yeah, the we'll have we'll have roster ship for the one p.m. But uh, okay. again, uh, good, good, good. I don't I don't know who where, where people are going to go. Uh, we talked about the AJ Puck experience last time. You were not in on the AJ Puck train. No. Six walks, which is hilarious because he didn't demonstrate any of this control problem during the spring. Uh, so the fact that he had the control issues he had here uh, in his first start, you know, don't know what happened there. Um, so, yeah, that's a look at the pitching. Uh, again, if some of these games in Baltimore and Philly, it clears <laughs> out, we have more obvious options to go to. But, uh, yeah, definitely not what I'm looking for uh, there. Moving on over to catcher. 
again, a lot of the top catchers in those games. So we do have William Contreras against Chris Paddock. Mm-hmm. Uh, Logan O'Hop against Puck. Uh, or Jeffers against Ross. You know, some of the top guys there. Yeah, it's not a it's it's definitely not a pretty group here. Uh, you know, DR know if he plays. Sure. Right. If if that game plays, I think that's always uh, you know, something that you want to pay attention to. But yeah, I mean you gotta you gotta figure, you gotta focus on uh oh hoppy's a uh he's a a, a right handed bat yep. going up against AJ Puck. I'm perfectly fine uh slotting him in there. Uh, you know, we I don't want to pay up for catcher. I mean, if if Baltimore KC plays, then yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw down uh, Rutschman, I'm happy to pay that money for him because he's mm-hmm. that good. Um, but I think right now, based on what we're seeing as far as the weather and everything like that, um, Ohapi would probably be the highest priced guy for me. I, I really am you happy know, to just kind of let it kind of crap around. I'd, I'd, I'd go down to Gary Sanchez for crying out. Yeah, we, we might get Nick Fortes in the lineup here. Um, he is a guy that last year actually had like a 280 ISO against left handed pitching. Um, you know, limited sample size, obviously, because he was platooning at the catcher spot. But they did start him the other day against a lefty. He went over three, 2,300. Maybe on this slate, you just take the cheapest catcher uh, on the board. And, you know, it, it it's not uncommon on these type of slates to have a hitter go against your pitcher. You know, you don't think Sandoval's going to throw a no hitter. As long as he doesn't get rocked, you could have Fortes go against Sandoval here and just hope at 2,300, maybe he gets hit by a pitch or something, you know, like, you know, you know throws the elbow out there. and gets Lean, on lean into it, kid. Lean into it. Yeah, you know, then the next guy hits into a double play and wipes him off, you know. But, you know, at 2,300 bucks, you know, Fortes could be somebody that, you know, I might just plug and punt because, you know, again, the weather kind of makes this difficult. Betancourt would be the other catcher. Um, there's not a lot down here. There's you mentioned Gary down, Sanchez. It definitely yeah. could be a Gary Sanchez slate. So it's it's six games, right? Is that what it is? Six yeah, games? six games, but maybe three. Six so. games, but maybe three. So yeah, I mean, you're you're not looking at at any world beaters at catcher. No. Um. So yeah, I'm very happy to spend down over there. Very uh, first, happy. To. First base obviously would get a little bit more interesting. There's some big names here if they are able to play. Bryce Harper's homework twice on Tuesday. You know, he would get Frankie Montes if that game plays. Matt Olson obviously gets you know player to be named here for the White Sox sure. as a starter. Uh, Reese Hoskins in the middle of that Milwaukee lineup could be interesting against Chris Paddock again. I didn't know Paddock was still in baseball. Never mind the <laughs> fact that he's starting games for oh, Milwaukee here. So uh, you know, there's that. Pascantino probably not given the weather in the matchup against Burns. I mentioned Paredes homered today, so there's that. And then the Burger Man, you like Sandoval, but Jake Burger. 320 ISO against left-handed pitching the last two seasons. Yeah, well, I was kind of I, I didn't even you know think about him over his uh, at first base. I was actually thinking about him you know incessantly for uh, third for third. But yeah, listen, I would definitely I would I would use him there at first base. Um, you know, I think you can look at Josh Bell a little further down. You know, that's the funny thing here is like even this slate if you're if you're not paying up for Olson and Harper, you know, again, I mean it's it's pretty suspect on the way down. Uh, it, when you look at Carlos Santana versus Joe Ross, yeah, you know, I mean, Josh Bell hits lefties better. Santana does fine against right handed pitching, I think that's good. Nolan Shenwell against you know, AJ Puck draws a walk on, on, off of that one there. I think you know, Shenwell is uh, you know, a, a, a name worthy of looking at. I'll have actually, you know what, it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll look at Jared Walsh, yeah, uh, left handed bat against Aaron Savali. Um, you know, again, I don't, I don't anticipate I, the, the, the lines, the, the run line, not the run line, the game totals, nothing's very outlandish here. I think the Miami angels one though, is uh, I think that's the highest of on the slate at like nine. Yeah. Well, bad. I mean, some bad pitching uh, to start the year for both of those starters. The Walsh one's kind of interesting because he had that huge year with the angels. Then last year, so was he was dealing with like concussions or something like yeah, that. He got or migraines he or... Yeah, he got hit in the head early on in the season. Yeah, and like he just was never able to sort of come back from it. Alex Kirilov's a lefty power bat. He hits usually in the middle of the of the twins lineup there at 3100 bucks. So definitely a couple of, of spend downs. Yeah. Jake Bowers gonna Jake Bowers cracking their lineup. He did he hit fifth today. 
Interesting. So maybe, you know, Bowers could get in there against Paddock. So uh, we'll see when the official lineups come out. I was going to say, that they, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a lineup like first thing in the morning tomorrow morning. Yeah. I'll post it. I'll post it in the Fantasy Alarm Discord. I'll just be like, because we'll, we'll build a sample lineup here. Yeah, but we but once we see what those lineups look like, and then once we see as far as, um, you know, the, the weather situation, uh, we'll have a better read on it. So, yeah, I'll do that. I'll, yeah, I'll... we don't have the benefit of the live show for uh, for the Wednesday slate because it is the early afternoon start time. So, uh, you know, what we're doing here is breaking down this slate for you. And then any and all updates will be in the playbook, which I think it's me. I think I'm on the playbook. Good, 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 awesome job for John. And, uh, and we'll update <laughs> the Discord um, for all of you as well as that news and lineup notes come through. Uh, second base position, again, Ozzy Albies. Uh, Semi in against Savali, Araz at 46, uh, Brandon Lau with the power at 43. I like Bryson Stott a lot, but that game may not play. Brandon Drury is a guy that hits lefties really well. Maybe that's the spot at 4,100. Yeah, you know, I was kind of scrolling past him over it uh, at first, and, and then I realized, yeah, he does qualify at second. That actually might be uh, something to take a look at. Yeah, again, I mean, it, it, depending on, on what's going to play, I do like Edward Julian um, going up against Joe Ross. There's nothing uh, nothing substantial about him. Uh, Bryce Terang. Bryce Terang is on this, like, ridiculous start right now. He's got a couple of uh, knocks on uh, on Tuesday night, you know. It's a stolen basis, Howard. He's got six already in four games. He stole two crazy. more tonight. He stole how what? He stole two more bases today. Two more tonight. Yeah, Bryce Terang, baby. He's the he's the he's the poor man's Mookie Betts of this slate. Uh, listen, they they talked about Bryce Terang last year. He had a, he had a ton of trouble getting on base consistently. Mm-hmm. Not having trouble getting on base consistently to start this year, and that speed that speed is playing up big time. I'm I'm full on agreement with you. Getting him against a, a righty and Paddock twenty nine hundred. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I love that spend down call for. Uh, Big time there. Uh, it might make first base a little bit easier because I would just play Drury at first and Terang at second. That's, that's a great call out by you. Uh, Cavalero's down here. He has some speed as well if you can find a way to get on base uh, against the uh, – You're going to have to check on him. He got hit on the wrist tonight Okay, already. So, you know, that 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 could be with a morning start for Caballero, who sure. I've, I've apparently learned is a bit of a drama queen in a little head case. Oh, is he? Yeah, that's what I've heard. All right, maybe that's why they shipped them out of Seattle. You know? Maybe so. You know, you'll have to take a look at uh, and, and and see what happens there. Okay, third base has two guys up top that maybe in games that won't play, but obviously there would be an elite spot like <laughs> and, and Austin Riley. Get we're Henderson digging for so much value right now. Like we're gonna build a lineup. We're gonna leave like three thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars on the table here, and we're gonna be able to put in like you know we're gonna be like oh yeah Riley absolutely hundred yeah. uh, percent Ozzy Albies against the left oh it's a lefty starting for uh, for the White Sox yes please thank yeah, you yeah exactly uh we get Berger at third base though like you mentioned he has first and third eligibility that feels like a pretty easy plug yeah uh, Jake Berger on this slate here Ren Gifo also hammers left handed pitching. I didn't think I'd find myself doing an angel stack in 2024, but you know, we might get there. <laughs> Drury Rengifo with a, a trout kicker, you know, like, you know, a hoppy, a catcher, you know, there's, there's, we might be working at an angel stack. In the play. <laughs> uh, right? Rengifo, it's, it's the, uh, it's the pick on AJ puck lineup. It, it honestly, it may be, but if I remember correctly, Rengifo has some big time numbers against left-handed pitching. Let's see last season, uh, force to whoo. Last season, I got the right player. Just what? No, okay, hold on. That was okay. Great. <laughs> no, I was looking at Ronald Acuna there. <laughs> I, I typed. So the problem is, I searched so many players. I typed in Luis and clicked on the first one. And they gave me Campusano. If you remember, Campusano had a four sixty woba uh, mm-hmm. against left handed pitching last year, and I was like, that is uh, a pretty crazy number here. But Rangifo was really good, if I remember correctly. Give me one second. I'll pull those numbers up for you. Uh, splits, lefties. Shout out to our friends over at Fangraphs providing all the awesome data uh, that we use for our research here against left-handed pitching last season, 255 ISO and 909 uh, OPS. Uh, that was 2022, 2023, 928 OPS, 540 slug, 216 ISO, 395 Woba, all the same. Ridiculous numbers for NGFO against left-handed pitching. 
Uh, they're at thirty seven hundred dollars. When was the last time? Because now, because now, what I what what you're gonna do now? Because we're not gonna see the lineup. Is yeah. Now I want to know what the Angels' perspective lineup is, or what lineup they've thrown out there against the left-handed starter. I don't know. Have they faced any lefties? Yeah. Let me let me see here. Angels starting lineups. Um, that's not updated correctly. Here we go. Angels uh, lineups. Past lineups. Uh, do they Myers righty righty? Uh, so their projected lineup April 2nd that's today. So they face a lefty today in Luzardo, right? Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes. All right, they, perfect. They had Ren, Rendon lead off, they played Hicks, Trout, uh, Ward, Drury, Sano. Yeah, they did not have Renji, Rengifo in the lineup, right? Is, Shanwell and then Ohop and then Nita. Disappointing. Is it just a day off? Have you played any of the lefties? You don't see they got any of the lefties. They did not do a lefty anywhere else. Well, if they don't have Ranjif in the lineup, I feel like they're messing up here. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. It is a an afternoon game on a on a, on a series ender, so you know maybe Rendon you know taps out uh, of that one there. But yeah, kind of wild. Rendon, Hicks, Trout, Ward, Drury, Sano, so, Shanuel, so gross. Well, I just said all those numbers on Rajiv, and I'm not taking him back. He hits lefties really well. So yeah, he. I'll bet you he's he's on there. I mean, if he started the last time they faced the lefty, so I mean, I can't imagine you know Anthony Rendon is going to have his heart in the uh, in in showing up for work tomorrow morning. So. <laughs> I was going to say he hates the schedules, so back to backs probably aren't his thing here. No, definitely. Um, not. All right, let's move on over to shortstop again. Bobby Witt would be cool. Trey Turner would be cool. Uh, can't play either of them. Most Trey likely. Turner would be cool. Bobby Witt, I don't know if I'd be cool with that against Corbin Burns. He is off to a pretty good start, but yeah, that's true. Tough spot for Burns. Seager is pretty cool against uh, Savali. Savali. Yeah, I would agree with you. Ellie De La Cruz, not okay against no. Zach Wheeler. No, 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 no. 30% strikeout rate still. Dude, um, one terrible. of the plays that we played a lot last year was Willie Adamas at home versus right-handed pitching. Ah. Um, it was uh, one of those weird splits where he himself <clears throat> Says like he he feels like he really he can see the ball really well at home with the the hitters uh, backdrop. The are, yeah, um, and the numbers now again he doesn't ever hit for a pretty high, a high average or anything like that. Um, but last season at home uh, against right-handed pitching, two thirty ISO uh, for him there, so three twenty four wOBA, which is high for him. So again, you know, don't look at the number and be like that's not great. It's it's pretty big for him. Um, so yeah, uh, a righty at home for. Uh, for Adamus could be interesting at 4,200 there. Well, listen, I'm, I'm fine with that. You're bringing me the data that says it. I'm, I'm definitely in, you know, it should be interesting to see uh, what happens. I don't know if you've looked at those Milwaukee lineups. There's no consistency whatsoever. It's crazy. Uh, Pat Murphy is just playing all sorts of matchups. He's got, you know, Churio's batting lead off. Then he's batting last. Then he's all of a sudden he's batting sixth. I'm like, right. uh, Wait, what are you doing here? Yeah, Trio hit ninth tonight. They had Sal Freilich lead off uh, in that one. Again, this was they didn't even have Adamus in the lineup. Uh, yeah, they did. Never mind. He cleaned up today. They had Bowers hit fifth. Hoskins hit sixth. Oliver Dunn hit seventh. Um, so he, Christian Yellick hit third in there. So yeah, we'll see what that lineup looks like. I guess uh, they faced off against Louis Varland uh, today. I think they won. Mm. Won that game. They did three to two. Okay. So, anyways, some value there. Tim Anderson <laughs> against Sandoval, 3,800. Anybody else for you? Yeah. No, Zach Nito against AJ Puck, if we want to keep uh, sure. hammering that one there. No, again, it's, uh, you know, I have to see. Uh, is, you know, again, Ezekiel Duran, is he going to be starting at third against Savali? That's something that we're going to have to kind of wait and see when Josh Young uh, fractured his wrist. Um, they brought up just here. There's a here's a name to kind of pay attention to for tomorrow morning. Is Justin Foscue going to be in the lineup for the the Texas Rangers? So you've got Ezekiel Duran, you've got Josh Smith, who could form that lefty righty platoon in Texas. But they Isn't brought up Foscue. What's that? Oh, there you go. Second base eligible, twenty five hundred. Foscue. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Uh, he could be in the lineup, uh, you know, for that game, and he could be uh, in in a really nice spot. Okay, uh, we'll take as much value as we can, obviously, on this day because 
I mean, maybe we'll spend up at, at outfield. Uh, Trout 59 for sure, I think, finds his way into my lineup. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Adolis Garcia's arms with the, the size of watermelons this offseason. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know what workout plan, in quotations, he was on this offseason, but he's looking mighty strong. Uh, Randy Rosarena, Lewis Robert, we'll see if that game plays. Yelich might actually be a, a really strong option. Yelich's on fire to start the season. Fine. Apparently the back is super healthy and feeling really good. Back-to-back seasons, dude. We got a, a healthy Yelich last year, and he, he you know, was probably one of the better steals of, of seasonal fantasy baseball where he was going uh, in drafts last year. So if he's healthy, uh, I'm buying into to that for sure. Um, and then we'll see what Atlanta looks like. Uh, Carter against Savali at 47. Do we do Buxton at 46? He's still no. not hurt yet. So yeah, almost. You see, he almost got he almost got taken out by the uh, by the bratwurst in the sausage race. No. He was coming out of the dugout. I was saying he was coming out of the dugout while the sausages were like coming at him. And all of a sudden he like turned and he saw nose and he like darted back into the dugout. It would be there. so Byron Buxton like if he got taken out by the sausage race. If he got taken out by the sausage race and landed on the IL. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um <laughs> but dude, he's, he's he's leading there. He's I, I would probably give him a look at 46. As long as he's healthy, the power is there for that bat. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Um yeah. Wyatt Langford is pretty good at 44. Wyatt Langford, yeah, I, I think he's uh, you know. He's off to a uh, an interesting start. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Jose Siri's off on, on on a great start as well. Yeah, a lot of power in that bat um, for sure. Strikes out a ton, but home runs, walks, and stolen bases. All you get mm-hmm. out of Jose Siri. Uh, Freilich led off again, thirty eight hundred. He could very well lead off again against Paddock here. Um, Batting 077 right now, my boy, my boy Sal. I've got him in like. Like half of my fantasy team. Where where right? is hold on? Where is where's Torrio? Thirty four hundred. Oh, I mean that's an automatic play. The guy's gonna win rookie of the year this year. How is Torrio at thirty four hundred? I don't know, but now he's in our lineup. So. Just put you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but now he's in. Now he's now he's in our outfield. But now he's right there for us. <laughs> now he's in the outfield. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had any easier decision to make all season. Now. <laughs> just like you know, now he's now he's there. Now he's now he's playing. And see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Honestly, we can do the same thing with Tarang at this point. He's twenty nine hundred dollars second baseman. So and they they and you know what? If Pat Murphy had his way, they'll be eighth and ninth in the lineup. So. Hey, you know what? Wraparound stack, right? You know, there's you don't even right. need the wraparound stack because you know, for whatever reason, he's like, I'm just gonna bat these guys last. I know. All right, let's let's you know. We'll just commit to the three the three stack with Yelich here, and we'll 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 get a wraparound there. Uh, pitching, jeez, I don't know. Um, I told you, Sandoval's my pay down. Okay, I'm good with that. Sandoval works. Evaldi or Savali, I guess we pick one for now and hope that Strider pitches. Yeah, so pick Evaldi for now and spend more money. Okay. Um, then we did we did Burger at third. We did Burger at third. You oh did, or did you want no? Did you want Renjifo? Did you want to get that uh, that little Angel stack? Well, in there? the thing is, like, I don't know if he's gonna play. I definitely think Burger. Oh, because you're doing Sandoval. So yeah, I guess we have to do Renjifo. Do we do Drury at first? Dr- I know Drury at first works. And Trout in the outfield. And then we did Rangifo at third. So we 40. don't need to push. We don't need to push it with Logan O'Hoppy. We don't. We don't. <laughs> we do need a catcher, though. I don't know who that would end up being. We could spend up, can't we? We got money. Yeah, you want to do uh, another? No, four? man. These guys are all crap. What are you talking about? Do I want to? Do you want to? No, I thought we. Who were, who were we talking about that was our, uh, our pay is. down there? Um, I just had Seeger there. Oh, it was uh, Gary Sanchez. We were going yeah, another, another okay, Brewer. Another Milwaukee play, yeah. <laughs> um, no, the send down was right here. It was Nick Fortes, but you were doing um, we're, we're doing Sandoval, so. Uh, yeah, Gary Sanchez, sure. Four, four bro- Listen, it's a six-game slate that might be a, a three-game slate, so you're going to get four multiples of sacks in here. So, And honestly, I kind of like this lineup. Not even, I'm not even going to lie. Not even going to lie to you. Sandoval, Evaldi, Gary Sanchez, Drury, Terang, Rangifo, 
Seeger is our big spend there as well with uh, Churio, Yelich, and Trout. So we're getting three guys over 5K in our bat in our lineup here. Um, some really good values. I mean, dude, Terang and, and Churio should not be 2,900 and 3,400. They should, I don't even care if they go 0 for 4 tomorrow. They should not be that cheap. So, uh, guys, again, short show, quick slate. I'll be on the playbook. You got to be in Discord uh, and checking out the playbook for all the, all the updates because we will not have a live show uh, for this six game main slate here over on DraftKings. Um, we'll be back though, uh, Friday, no preview show for Thursday, just three games there on that slate. So be in the discord for that as well. We will have a write-up for the Thursday slate as well. So you will have a playbook available, uh, to make some lineups. Then Howard and I will be back for the pre-show on Friday and the live stream Friday as well. Till then everybody, we'll catch you later.